Hey, it's time for math class. You're going to like this one. We're going to play play checkers. Remember playing checkers as a kid? What's the major, what is the fundamental rule of checkers? I know like every game it has several rules, but what is the singular, the major rule of checkers? It's, a, it's the rule of movement, right? It's actually a directional rule. You may move in only one direction. Now that direction might be side, it might be forward, it might be back, or it might be on an angle. But in checkers, we can only move in a square or an angular direction. So this probably sounds like kind of a silly question, but if we were on a checkerboard, how would we move around in a circle? Well, we'd move in an angular fashion, create an angular pattern that moved around what appears to be a circle. So now that we know how to move around a checkerboard in what appears to be a circle, let's go one step further and let's cut a circle with an imaginary drill. In other words, let's move back to the checkerboard and instead of simply moving around the board, let's imagine we're on the z-axis looking down at the board and we're cutting a hole at every point where we move around the circle. We move and cut, move and cut, move and cut, and we end up with a circle. Now let's take this idea one step further and say, what if we were constrained to moving only along the x and the y axes? That is, we could only move left to right or forward and back instead of moving in an angle like we do in checkers. If that were the case, we'd have to figure out how to make an angle shape using just square movements. Right? In other words, we'd have to move along the x-axis and then along the y-axis in order to create the angle pattern that we just created with a direct movement on a checkerboard. Now what we've just done is to constrain ourselves just like an actual shop machine. Remember, the shop machine can only move along the x-axis, the y-axis, or in this case the z-axis, but our movements are constrained to one unit at a time along X or Y, starting at a position that we call home. So here we start at home. We move one position along X and then one position along Y, and we instruct the machine to drill a hole. Home is a very important concept for us. Home is what we call our zero, zero point, zero X and zero Y. It's the reference point, it's the place from which we create our entire design. All of the points in our design, everything that we do with the tool, references from this place that we call home, or zero, zero on our grid. So from our home position, we measure and move precisely one unit at a time along X and Y in order to fulfill the specifications from our design standards. So we start at home which is our zero, zero point. It's considered zero X and zero Y, and it's the base of our design, and we will move first one unit along X. We're measuring positions, so we've moved one position to the positive along the X axis, and we haven't moved along the Y axis yet, so we're still considering this position where we have the, the chip placed now as X1 and Y0. We track or mark our positions as we go. So we start at home, position 0, 0. We move one position X. So we're at position X1, Y0. We haven't moved along the Y yet. We move one position Y. So we're now at position X1 and Y1. Remember, we're targeting the positions away from home. So we're one X away from home and one along the Y axis away from home, and that's where we're going to instruct the drill to drop the, the hole. Are we ready to cut? Okay, we start at home, zero, zero. We move one along the X to X1, Y0. We move one along the Y, X1, Y1, and we drop a hole. Then we move one more along the X. Notice we haven't moved yet along the Y, so we're still in position Y1, and then we move and we're at X2 and Y2, and we drop a hole there. Now, to get to the next position in our design, we move back along the X-axis, so we're back to X1 and still 
at y2. We're still two positions back along the y-axis, if you will. We're going to move one more. So now we're at x1 and y3. And visually, you can see, starting from home, we're one position x, three positions y, and we drop another hole. And for the top hole in this design, we're going to move one position further back along x. So now we're on x0. And you can see we're immediately parallel to, to, to home. We're on the same x axis as we would be at home. So we're x0, y3, and we'll move one more position to be y4. And there we'll drop another hole. Now we're about to encounter something interesting. To get to this next position on the design, we drop one back the y-axis, but now we're going to move to the left of home, which we've designated x0. And so where will we be on the x-axis if we move one position from home? Well, remember back in second grade when your teacher was trying to teach you about a number line? Remember the number lines that ran from all the way from 0 to infinity to the right and 0 to infinity to the left? This is the number line. The x-axis that we're working on now and the y-axis are number are simply number lines. And so what we're going to do with the x-axis now is move one position to the left of x0, one position from home, and that moves us into negative or minus territory. And it's important for us to focus now on minus and plus as left and right or top and bottom relative to our home position. So we are one to the left or minus one from home on the x-axis and we're at y3 so we're going to instruct our imaginary drill to drop another hole and then we'll move further through our design we move one more space down the y-axis and notice we're going to move one more space to the left of home or away from home so we'll be at x negative 2 y2 where we'll drop a hole and then our last one will move us back along the x-axis one position so we move from x negative 2 to x1 and now we're at y2 and we'll move one further toward the front on y and we'll make our last hole at x negative 1 and y1 and there we have our circular pattern it's really important to think in terms of positions instead of numbers we are concerned as we go along with the position where we find our imaginary drill, let's say at x1, y0, x1, y1, because we'll use that marker, that position, to tell our drill where to drop the next hole. We'll move one more position, and we'll describe that position as x2, y1. We are two units away from home on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. We move one more position back. Remember when we move in a positive direction on the y-axis, it's back. Negative direction is forward. We're now at x2, y2, where we'll instruct the drill to drop another hole. As we move, we're concerned about the geography. It helps to think in terms of the geography of the space or where our tool moves on the surface of our material. The coordinates that we use, x0, y0, x2, y negative 1, whatever they may be, just help us measure and help us instruct our tools to build the designs that we want to build. The numbers serve our purpose, not the other way around. We are using math to enable manufacturing. We're not learning numbers just for the sake of learning numbers. But through all this, we've created a problem. The problem is that our circle, what we've described as a circle pattern, is really a diamond. Now some of that is a function of the grid we're using. We're using a checkerboard. We're not using a finely lined grid. This is for our instructional and understanding purposes. But it illustrates the important consideration for us. How do we get a circle? Well, we remember from our initial video series how stuff gets made if you want a circle you start with a block of material and you cut away everything that's not a circle and so the question for us is how much do we cut away and of course where do we make the cuts and now having gone through a few of these videos we're ready to start trying to figure out where to actually make those cuts
Now, if all this is making sense to you, if you understand the grid, even if it's a checkerboard, and if you understand the limitation of movement along the X and Y axes, and you understand how to use positioning on that grid to do things like create circles, you have come a long, long way in your understanding of manufacturing math. I'm very proud of you. Now we're going to start digging in a little bit deeper into some more precise details, but the concept that you have is going to ride with us all the way through. All right? You're doing great. Looking forward to seeing you in the next part. Thanks.